Alright, hey everyone, um, just coming back here, I'm still really happy with green white and where that is, but I thought I'd just test uh, Bant a little bit more and change some things up and see how they go. Um, so I've actually removed Force of Negation, uh, point being uh, is most of the decks we're versing are quite fair, or we can race them, or when they're going off they're not going off by creatures. Um, so I've still included the Teferi Time Reveler to give us an out against uh, to, uh, Game 1 Ensnaring Bridge, Chalice, um, and Blood Moon, uh, but that's, that's the uh, main inclusion there. I've also gone back to putting in a couple of Curious Obsessions. Um, I really just want to drop a 1 mana creature, attack and draw a card immediately. I feel like drawing it off the 2 mana cards a bit slower and a bit clunkier. Um, so I've actually uh, reduced that down to 1 copy from I think I had a 4 last time. Um, so including Sentinel's Eyes as well, because uh, I was happy how that performed. A couple of evasiveness spells in Spirit Mantle. Um, and other than that, I've removed uh, Invisible Stalker and replaced it with Core, just because uh, we're not running the Force of Negation, so we don't need that heavy, heavy blue um, uh, splash in the creature base. Uh, moving over to the sideboard, and I've kept the theme pretty similar to how I've got it in green-white. Uh, so I've got a split between Graft Digger's Cage and Rest in Peace. Um, I have gone down one Rest in Peace. I don't think it will hurt us too much, but we'll see what happens in the league. Kept the three Hushbringers. This card's being an absolute all-star for me at the moment. I find them bringing in, in a lot of matchups, and my opponents are getting frustrated by it, so good. Good to see. Uh, I'm at two Force of Vigors, um, so hopefully that can help us in the matchups we need it, such as when they jam that Blood Moon. Um, and other than that, a couple of ceremonious rejections uh, for Tron instead of the Gadok Teague. I've found Gadok Teague has been getting removed a lot, so hopefully just countering that one big spell um, will be good enough for us. As long as it's not an Ulamog, then we can pretty much counter anything we want. Mm. Um, and Spell Pierce, I think, is pretty mm. efficient form of uh, counter mm. spell. Um, and mm. they might play around Stubborn Denial uh, being a one-mana counter, but it's much harder for them to play around Spell Pierce. Mm. Um, still keeping in the past, obviously, mm. for those problem decks we've been through before, like Infect and Wurza. Um, so yeah, that's the list. I'm going to jump across and into a league. Uh, let me just make sure it's the right list quickly. I think it is. Yep. Okay, cool. So yeah, haven't um, looks like I'm getting a little bit of feedback via like buttons on on my last video. Um, looks like guys are you guys are pretty happy with the list. So that's good to see. Um, I'll try to continue to play uh, aggressive because I'm still being a little bit too timid where I should be more aggressive. But hopefully, at the very least, uh, all my ramblings are giving you guys. Uh, something to think about in your own gameplay and things to consider. Alright, this hand's looking pretty good. We're going to keep it. Uh, we're on the play as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, so we probably don't have to search. It depends on what our opponent's doing here. Um, what we see from them. We could potentially search a plains here, or we could potentially search a hallowed fountain. I don't think we'll need the double blue with how many blue cards are in our deck. Um, Blood Crypt, interesting. Um, no Shocking or Street Wraith, so I'm not thinking Shadow, I'm thinking more Jund here. Um, and. If that's the case, I kind of want to save. Uh, the windswept teeth to get a dried arbor. 
Um, so I might just be extremely mana inefficient and drop a spirit mantle right now. And then next turn we can go core spirit dancer plus uh, one other aura. Or it'll depend on what they do. Or we can hold up for um, dried arbor. <coughs> Uh, it could also be Dredge, but something's telling me Jund at the moment. Alright, opponent is in the think tank. They're deciding what they want to do. Uh, this could be a Tarmogoyf, or a Scavenging Ooze, or a Renin Six. Alright, there's the Renin Six, so it is Jund. Um, we're just gonna take that out as quickly as possible. Uh, so we can just drop Ethereal Armor and kill it. And I'm pretty happy doing that. So now our opponent can't just jam Liliana here, um, or we'll dry it arbor, so they'll probably wait for next turn to cast Liliana, um, and then they'll have like a Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt back up, so we, we want to get two creatures down in this next turn. That's a pretty good draw. Um, let's just go to our attacks. Alright, looks like they're using a removal spell. Assassin's Trophy, so we get a basic land from that as well, so that's good. Um, that's our last basic in the deck though, which is a little bit upsetting. But I'm pretty happy with that. That makes um, my post-combat stuff a lot easier. So now I can go core. And I can drop the uh, totem armor on it. Which is really good. And I have a dried arbor that I'm holding up as backup. So. Oh, oh, shoot. Almost just get past. Um, yeah, we just jammed this bubble here. Um, it's not going to get fatal pushed. Um... Unlike the Dried Arbor Wheel. So I'm very happy about this game at the moment. We've drawn really well. <clears throat> uh, as long as Core survives, we can drop double aura and hopefully go Yu-Gi-Oh mode. Uh, we'll drop the Rancor first. Uh, just use up that green mana. If we draw a Daybreak Coronet, we'll drop that second and we'll just ignore our other Hyena Umbra, probably. Uh, depends on what cards we see, though. Alright, opponent's had enough. Alright, um... So I don't hate Spell Pierce here. Seems pretty good to me. Um, rest in Peace is okay, but that could be overboarding. Uh, path. I don't really like Path against uh, Jund. Mm. Our creatures are generally going to be bigger. Um, I love our card draw spells. Mm. I love our spirit mantles. Mm. Teferi doesn't really do anything, mm. so that's an easy cut. Uh, Sentinel's Eyes mm. is pretty decent. Um, and it also, if a creature goes to the graveyard... It will. We can use it to filter how large their Tarmogloys are, or remove creatures so that his scavenging ooze doesn't get bigger. So, mm -hmm. kind of fun. I'm not sure how reliable and resilient it is, but those are some things to keep in mind when you're playing. Uh, I might cut a core. It's a little bit weaker, and yeah, we'll just go two spell pierces. Two spell pierces and four ley lines seems pretty good to me. <clears throat> Um, okay, uh, we can't keep this hand. Uh, we don't have our land. If we get Thought Seized, we just do nothing. Um, yep, so this is a keep. 
and I'll get hmm, sort of frustrating. Uh, well, we've got three blue auras in the deck, but we need it for spell pierce if we draw spell pierce. So that's five cards, and then we've got four rancors, which are green, and then four. Yeah, let's just put on the horizon canopy here. Uh, uh, let's be aggressive. It's being too cute. <clears throat> Alright, we've got a fetch land, which is also good, because um, what they can do is, at uh, end of our turn 2, they'll Assassin's Trophy the Ley Line, and then turn 3 they'll try to jam that Liliana. Um, so having that fetch back up right now is very nice. Um, so next turn we're just dropping one aura, which will be high in our Umbra. Um, and our uncracked Windswept Teeth, and then we'll pass it to our opponent. Oh, okay, all that. Um, yeah, let's, let's see what they do. They might get rid of the Hyena Umbra, I doubt it. Um, so yeah, we go Dried Arbor this turn, and then next turn, uh, we can do, well, they didn't do the line anyway, but if they did Assassin's Trophy there, we lose our Dried Arbor to the Liliana. Um, and then next turn we go Ethereal Armor, attack for four, and then Glade Cover Scout to protect against Liliana. So, here's a Liliana. Uh, each play discards a card. Uh, that's just okay, so we'll get rid of our land. Land or creature here? Uh, land. So I'm probably getting a Hallowed Fountain end of turn here, and then I go Hallowed Fountain at the Alarma next turn. I think they're hoping that we have nothing and that we're not able to kill Liliana, and then they're gonna like Bloodbraid Elf or something. Alright, not a bad draw. Uh, We've got a lot of protection against Malmstrom Pulse as well. All of our things are different, different cards, so they can't just pulse away our board. Alright. Blood Okay, Blood Braid's alright. Inquisition. Well, that's not going to do anything. Uh, except for reveal their hand and make them discard a card. So. Mm. I don't think our opponent attacks here. Okay, they do. Yeah, it's not. I guess they're not really winning on the blocks. We're happy if they don't attack, especially with the spirit mantle in hand. Alright. Attack for seven. Three turn clock at the moment. Any aura off the top we might be able to kill them. Depends on what aura it is. Uh, Rancor, a Daybreak Coronet, or an Ethereal Armor will get us the kill. Alright. Because um, they cycled that, they can't Assassin's Trophy plus Li Liliana, so we're in a really good spot to win this. Oh, and even if they do, we've got the Glade Cover Scout to sack out. Why aren't they attacking with Bloodbraid Elf? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, uh, I'm pretty sure that just wins us the game, guys. Cool. Excellent. Um, well, that played out really well. Um, our blue didn't really do anything those games. The green-white deck would have played out pretty much identical to that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, um, it went well. I'm just curious, do we have a slightly higher fetch count in this deck list? I think we might. Yeah.
Yeah, so I got eight fetch lands here where my normal um, green white only have six. So we do have a higher threat uh, fetch land count, which will help us find Dryad. Uh, so yeah. Uh, well, we can't really keep this. We don't have an aura other than Daybreak, so we won't be able to cast Daybreak. All right, this hand looks really good. Um, curious, what am I bottoming here? Uh, what are we keeping? Um, it's one of these two that we bottom. And we've already got card draw here, so mm -hmm. I guess we bottom the Staggering Insight. It's just greedy to go for more than that. Um, now, we won't let them know about the blue just yet. Uh, we'll get the Temple Garden. And we'll pass it to our opponent. If we get to put both Hyena, Umbra, and Curious Obsession down, attack for three, draw a card. That feels pretty good. Hopefully they don't have Thought Seize. This hand looks pretty bad if they take the Obsession. Island. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we're... This is pretty good here. Um, short of like a spell pierce, but most of them are just running spell snare at the moment. Um, so yeah, control decks hate to see this card, I'm sure they do. This will fall off if they ever tap our board with the cryptic command. Um, we don't get it. Oh, we draw a core. That's a very good card against control as well. Thing in the ice. Oh, come on, man. We're trying to have some fun here. Um, so if we drop... Uh, this is annoying. Mm. I think we have to attack. They'll block. Um, and then we just play Core Spirit Dancer and hope to kill them next turn. But then if they kill the Core Spirit Dancer with a Path or a Lightning Bolt... We're almost certainly not going to win. Alright, let's go Spirit Mantle so we can attack through unimpeded. Uh, hopefully we'll draw a land off this attack and then we can cast Hyena Umbra. Okay, no lands. Uh, we still don't have double white for Daybreak Coronet, which is a bit sad. Hopefully no Blood Moon here, that would feel pretty bad. Interesting. Um, so they're probably holding up Archmage Charm here just to counter spell. Um, and unfortunately there's not a huge amount we can do about that. They might wait for the second thing we cast here. Um, I just didn't want to give them a one mana spell pierce um, and then they get to cast two other things and then they get to flip thing in the ice first card they cast next turn. Didn't sound like a great plan to me. Petty theft. Go away. Let us have our fun. Alright, with the Petty Theft cast, uh, we're still at risk of um, a Spell Snare or a Lightning Bolt or something, but I think we'd run out Core here. See if that resolves. Alright, there's a Spell Snare, we called it. Serum Visions, so double bottom plays. 
We've got them pretty low. A removal spell would have been great here. Um, if you are versing a lot of this deck, guys, just um, mm -hmm. in your meta, in your game store, um, just just run a whole bunch of Savage Swipe in the main deck. Um, and it's really good against them. Yeah, so turn two, you, well, turn one bubble, turn two aura plus this, you'll deal four damage to their creature, um, and then you'll get to... Uh, we didn't draw a creature, we, we just lose. Um, and then you'll get to kill their thing and attack for four, so it's excellent tempo. Um, and yeah, it's pretty pretty good against them. It doesn't give them the same mana that Path to Exile will give. So these Ley Lines do nothing. Uh, Teferi is like a pseudo-bounce spell, I suppose. Uh, we need to be worried about Blood Moon post-board. And I don't mind Spell Pierce. Uh, maybe two Spell Pierce for two Spirit Mantle. That way we can protect our cores and protect our coronets resolving. Uh, Staggering Insight might just be a bit slow as well. Um, can't you give me a sort by card type? I want to see how many auras I've got. So aura, aura... Auras. So 20 auras. That might be going a little bit too low. Um, so Spirit Mantle. Good. Teferi, bad. Spell Pierce, bad. Alright, this will do. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like this either. Mm -hmm. Alright, on to those mulligans to four. Alright, we'll keep this. Mm. Opponent's on, s on five. He's mulligan to five as well, so our opponent's not got great hands um so we're keeping we need to bottom three cards so one uh, two three yep cool i'm pretty happy with that and then we just lead on hallowed fountain oh wait Fuck. Grabbed the wrong fetch land. Alright, I've just thrown this game, guys. Sorry. <sighs> we got the card draw off Curious Obsession. We would have been okay there, but... We literally need to top... Yeah, super punished. Fucking hell. had the right line we just clicked on the wrong land out of habit um, guess I need to be a little bit slower online there's our boy daybreak land something uh, well, land won't even do it we just need daybreak or spirit mantle or brancor come on opponent stop stopping us on our upkeep we want to play our next game after this one because we're not winning here. Ethereal Arm is pretty good. Attack for five. I should have played Razor of Edge Thicket after cycling. Yeah. Punished again. 
<clears throat> I'm trying my hardest to lose this game, guys. I swear. I swear. Alright. Um, that thing's going to flip in a bit, and we're going to be quite sad. Although, if they don't flip it this turn, they're on six after casting that off. Whoa. So they need to cast three instants or sorceries, or is it non-creature spell? Three instants or sorceries in this turn. Uh, so... Okay, they're going super low. I guess they've got it. Bolt. Blood Moon. Oh, come on, man. That's not fair. Uh, so Curious Obsession should already be on the board. But we're a Nupti. Um, jump block. Yep. Don't do this to me, opponent. Come on. So we would have had two more instances of damage. So we would have had an extra... F 2 damage, then an extra 3 damage, an extra 5 damage, and they'd be dead. Yep. Uh, I lost this to my own misplay, guys. Oh, that's a good card. Has our opponent got triple instant? Or are they just chump blocking? Cryptic command. Bounce one, and then draw a card. Alright, seems pretty reasonable. Alright. We're at a healthy life total. We draw exactly Force of Vigor. Mm, that complicates things. Alright, now we're pretty dead. Uh, yep, we should have won this one, guys. I tapped wrong. Um, or I searched the wrong land, and then... I sequenced it wrong and didn't get to play the Curious Obsession. So the Curious Obsession would have been an extra 3 damage and a card draw. Not that the card draw would have been relevant, but they'd be on 1 there. Can't imagine anything we draw gets us out of this, but let's see... Alright, GG. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's probably a good highlight of why all the little um, nuances of sequencing spells and abilities and things in this deck is important. Uh, that was a winnable game and we didn't win it because... Uh, <laughs> firstly because we fetched the wrong land, but then we, we sequenced wrong what we off of cycling that horizon canopy. So we're on the draw against somebody with a newbie symbol. I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, in the dark, this, this is okay. It's bad if it's a heavy removal deck, but if it's a control deck or a combo deck or something, um, we're all right. Oh, they've mulligan to five. Uh, also, if it's dredge, like this would be a pretty good hand against dredge because we've got our land, we've got our creature, and then we just, as soon as we've resolved this, we get to drop two spells, draw two cards, and drop a third spell, and yeah, we're pretty good. Uh, so this waterlog grove couldn't be infect, and it could be, um, what do you call it? 
Neoform Gristle brand. Um, Hallowed Fountain might make them think we're control, so it might they might not go for it in threat of force of negation. Alright, they've done nothing, so it's definitely Neoform. Uh, if we get to untap, we might get to do stuff. Wait, wait, they're countering this? Once upon a time in response, okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, there's the Allosaurus Rider. Alright, Spell Pierce is going to be excellent uh, from the boarding. Really? They're just hoping to draw something? Okay, I'm not complaining. I'm very happy to see that. So we're going to just pressure their life total as much as we can, as quick as we can. What? Oh, go away. I don't want to tap for blue. I want to tap for white. Alright. So they can't activate Gristlebrand anymore. Seems pretty good. Nourishing Shell for 15. I guess you can do that. That's cool too. Um, so our opponents only really de delayed the inevitable there. Because we got Core Spirit Dancer doing things for us. So getting game one is really good. Um, now our sideboard hate can help us out a lot uh, in game two. Uh, Leyline's pretty useless. Path can be okay. Teferi's pretty useless. This doesn't do anything. This doesn't do anything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Seems good. Uh, we're mul mulliganing this. Uh, this isn't good enough either. God damn it, deck. Stop. Oh, well, hopefully, just our graveyard hate gets us there. They're down to 5 2. We will get a draw. Uh, so he's kept his five. I think we can do better. Wow, not a single capable hand. My god. Alright. Keep. Get to put four cards on the bottom. So one, two... I guess we can hope Spell Pierce gets us there if we draw a blue. And then draw auras after that. We'll see. Definitely not the way I like to be playing the game is mulligan needing to a hate piece because none of the hands were really good enough prior to that. We'd need like a lot to go in our favor to make it worthwhile keeping. There's the Allosaurus Rider. Is he going for it? He is. Does he get there? Sometimes they just whiff. Just let them do their thing. Um, and sometimes they'll whiff. Sometimes, like, the last card on their library is Laboratory Maniac, and they have no way of drawing it um, without decking themselves. Oh, they brought in Veil of Summer. Mm -hmm. Son of a gun. <laughs> That's pretty smart. So mm -hmm. they saw the blue and they played around it. Four cards on top of their library. Um, either they cast Laboratory Maniac here. Or they don't. Even then, they're probably just beating us up with Gristlebrand and we still lose. Uh, 
Simeon Spirit Guide, Simeon Spirit Guide, now Manamorphose, and then Lab Maniac. Assuming they've drawn it. Alright, they're digging. They are digging for it, or else it would just be jammed already. Third Manamorphose. Did they keep all four in? I mean, for their sake, I hope they did. Four mana? Why do you exile the extra Simeon Spirit Guard? Ah, oh, so they've kept up green mana to play Veil of Summer. Okay. Opponent played pretty tight there, I guess. Um... Hmm. I don't think Staggering Insight's going to do anything. Let's bring that path in. Alright, I like this hand. Mulligan to five. So in this next turn, we sort of have two options. We can drop Curious Obsession and Rancor Attack, or we can just drop Curious Obsession, hope to draw a Graft Digger's Cage or something. Um, and I, th I think that's the better line. Uh, that's not a bad card either. Now next turn we can Daybreak Attack for 7 and hopefully draw a Spell Pierce or a Graft Digger's Cage. don't get there, but we can bluff it. Maybe they'll wait an extra turn to try to go off, because we've left up blue mana. It'll work a bit better if you shocked in like a hallowed fountain there. Um, so they Okay. They can't do anything. We got their life total too low. Or, or they just missed on the once upon a time. They were probably looking for Allosaurus, Rider, and Wift, but... Pressuring their life total is important. If we'd have done the Rancor, instead of being 11, they would have been at 9, which is basically the same number as far as their deck is concerned. So, that didn't seem to matter in that scenario. Um, I've decided not to run Ashiok in the deck. Uh, that was an answer to uh, the Scape Shift decks, the, uh, the Amulet Titan deck, sorry. Um, but just with Hushbringer, we're pretty well placed against them anyway. And without lifelink and just going aggressive, um, we seem to get there quite often. Alright, we can't keep this. So 
so we'll ship this away. Even if we get Dried Arbor, we won't have double white unless we drop an Aura, and we have we have a Totem Armor. Mm. Oh wait, we can't get double white anyway, because we need the, the fetch lands to do that. Alright, we'll keep this, we'll bottom this, we'll bottom... Hmm... So this will lock us off blue if we get rid of this, because we have to fetch Temple Garden here. But this will lock us off double white. I think the advantage of getting Daybreak Coronet is much higher um, than keeping that blue mana and having access to our, all our colours. Uh, it's a pretty aggressive clock anyway, clocking them for four next turn. And then anything we draw, hopefully, we can cast it, as long as it's not blue. Thought is No, don't do that. That's rude. Uh, there goes Ethereal Armor. Alright, that's not bad. Double Totem Armor. It can be relevant. Doesn't look like it's Grixis Death Shadow because they don't run basic swamp. So my guess is just the Jun deck again or an Abzan deck. Of course, it could be something left field. Uh, it could be a Gristle Shell again. We've been seeing a little bit of that online. So we've missed out on 4 damage we would have had if our Ethereal Armor had have lived and not got Thought Seized. Alright, looks like Jund. Attacking seems pretty bad here. So they didn't Liliana um, there because we had Dried Arbor back up. Um, or we were representing Dried Arbor back up. Now I've got the Bogle, um, so they can't Fatal Push the Dried Arbor. Ran in 6, that doesn't do anything. That gets them their land, I guess, if they missed a land drop for the turn. So then they can, like, land... Okay, Black Rick Cleave Cliffs. It's weird that they returned Verdant Catacombs and then played Black Cleave Cliffs. It makes me think they have something to do for 5 next turn. Mm. Uh, we're pretty stalled out here. I'm probably end of turn fetching this Windswept Teeth for a Hallowed Fountain. That or I just don't show them the blue. Like, this could just be me going greedy and running the fifth Horizon Land. Doesn't guarantee that I'm on blue. Yeah. I guess we don't fetch. And opponent is playing super patient here. So they're probably hoping we just draw a Daybreak Coronet, jam it, attack, and then lose out to Assassin's Trophy or Abrupt Decay plus a block. Um, so I guess that's why they're not rushing anything here. Are they get a Raging Ravine. Although this emblem coming off is mm -hmm. going to be bad for us. Have Retrace. Oh, God damn it. Alright. Uh, we're not winning this game. Uh, 
Alright, so I do like the idea of spell pierce as we discussed the other time we verse jund. Um other than that, I don't like path as I said before. Uh, staggering insight's pretty good, spirit mantle's pretty good, sentinel's eyes pretty good, curious perception. What did I trim last time? Maybe I trimmed a core and I think I ran two spell pierce. I don't think I want to trim two core for the third spell pierce. Um, we'll just keep a better, more aggressive hand. Hopefully, something that a hand that does something. Yes, we would like to play first. All right, cool. This looks like a really good hand. Um, our creature gives us back up um, to Liliana, so and we get our card draws off the Curious Obsession. So hopefully we fade that thought seize. Actually, maybe I should have played Scout off the Waterlog Grove in case they thought seize away the Clay Cover Scout. Uh, they're probably just going to take Curious Obsession because it's way too much card advantage here. Alright, um, they took the card I would have taken in their position. Uh, so here, we could Spirit Mantle, uh, but I like getting Ethereal Armor out because it gives us that bit of extra damage. Like, if they Fort Seize away this Spirit Mantle this turn, that feels kind of bad, but... Yeah, there it is. Uh, we can always top deck. In top deck, we trust. Opponents always get super salty when a Boggles player top decks a good card or a card they need. It's like, well, I mean, for every time we do that, there's another 20 times we don't. Uh, Alright, now I like. So they remove the Boggle. <laughs> They got two Lilianas? That would make me sad. We've got them to nine, and we've got protection from creatures. Seems pretty good. Now they're at eight. They fetch double overgrown tomb, which means they've got a red source in hand, like mountain. I was going to say raging ravine. Plague engineer. Come on, man. That's not nice. Uh, it's so sad. They took the um, Boggle so they could do that as well, or else they could only name one type. So we're probably getting Liliana this turn. Hey, that's a draw. Uh, let's keep on that aggressive game plan. Hopefully they don't have a land, so they can't kill Dried Arbor. Oh, actually, maybe we should have protected the Dried Arbor against like their plethora of removal spells with the Hyena Umbra. We get in one less damage, but we still have them on a two turn clock if we do it that way, yeah. We've just lost to dropping the aura on the wrong creature. That was pretty loose. Um, so we don't have anything in our graveyard we can get back. I guess we should have done that end of turn, because now this just gets Liliana to the bin. If it's like exactly Glade Cover Scout, oh sorry, exactly Slipper Belt Boggle, it's better, but then if it's Glade Cover Scout or Cool Spirit Dancer, it's worse. So yeah, we should have done that end of their turn. Uh, looks like we're losing this to me playing badly again. 
Super close, super close. If I if I put the uh, hyena armor on the right creature, we would have had them dead. We just can see. So I played that badly. That's two games this league I've played badly. Uh, we'll see if we can f clean it up for game three. Uh, well, this hand's got nothing going on for it other than protection from Thoughtseize, so I don't really like that. <clears throat> All right. I mean, it's a better hand. We can't cast Daybreak Coronet though. <laughs> We'd need to, and we don't have Totem Armor, so yeah, that's not good enough either. All right, this one looks really good. Uh, so now we're just bottoming the Ley Line and the Ethereal Armor. That way we can bottom um, double Ethereal Armor and keep Ley Line. Yeah, that might be a bit safer. I mean, it's hard to know in the dark, but... We will see. Actually, maybe I drop... A Razor Verge Thicket instead of the second Ethereal Armor. That's probably what I should have done. Although, this all looks pretty good to me. Um, it's a very good draw. So, like, any castable aura would be great here. Shock. Okay, we're versing Dredge. Um, so, we can just jam our auras and attack, and we're good. And they won't have main deck nature's claim or removal. Looks like our opponents cycled nowhere fast. And they still don't have a dredger in the bin. I'm not sure why they kept this hand. Um, they had the cycle, but they didn't have a dredge card to cycle off. They kept a seven, did they? Yeah, he kept a seven. I don't. I know he thought about it for a while, but like dredge mulligans pretty well. You just need to get to your pieces, and you're good. Alright, they're still missing on their dredger. Uh, this might just make them concede. If they can't present a blocker here, they just lose. Well, that is a blocker. Alright, let's just keep gaining life, and eventually we'll draw some sort of evasiveness or some trample, and we'll be good. But in the meantime, we need to get this life total nice and high, so when they get a wide board state, they can't kill us. And we get to attack for 15 next turn, off the daybreak, so it's not bad. Uh, we'll just hold the island in hand for now. I mean, we could miss out on one damage and one life gain from drawing a land next turn and playing our ley line, our second ley line, but... Yep, they've seen enough. 
Alright, so we all know the game plan here is remove these ley lines, remove this Teferi, bring in our Hoshbringers and our Graft Diggers Cage, and then we don't want any removal. Um, Spell Pierce could be okay, uh, but I'd like that more on the play than on the draw. And yeah, pretty happy with this. Curious Obsession looks a bit weak, actually. Uh, but this hand's perfectly capable, uh, especially with our hate piece. Mm. So yeah, definitely keeping this. I'd be a little bit happier mm. if one of these mm. was a mm. Vigilance source, but that's okay. You can't have it all, all the time. <clears throat> Do -do -do -do. Well, let's hope for our opponent's sake they kept a hand that does a little bit more than what their last uh, hand did. Or else this is going to absolutely destroy them. So definitely worth running out the Glade Cover Scout there in this sense, because... After casting our Curious Obsessions, there could be a case where the blue mana can cast a single Boggle. Um, it's pretty slim, and I'm doing that line, but I'm not fetching the right land or anything, so go me. Uh, so that's fine. Yeah, so we just jam out our hate piece here, and then pass turn. Oh, and we draw a Core Spirit Dancer. Um, so then we can start doing some gross things and attacking. They need, like, Conflagrate to remove this. Um, I guess sometimes they might board in Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy that will do the job too, but they have to spend, like, two mana doing that, or two mana on the... Or is it... I think it's two mana X on Conflagrate, or one red double X or something. Hmm. Put a target on Hushbringer's back. And then we'll attack with Hushbringer. And I guess they have to block. Okay, we get a free card. That's really good. <laughs> Yay! I love my card draw. Alright, cool. Uh, so, this turn we're probably loading up on Core Spirit Dancer, maybe. We'll see what we draw. Hard casting prized amalgam. Well, that's not going to get you there, dude. Uh, so, if that's the plan he's on, he's in a lot of trouble. I do like seeing Ethereal Armor. Ah, and a Sentinel's Eyes? Excellent. So play out. It, it really doesn't matter what we play out here, I guess. Maybe I could have put Ethereal Armor on the Blade Cover Scout, because they're in chump block mode, but yeah. Alright, attack for a lot. Uh, we don't need to attack with the Scout. They're probably chumping, and then... Okay, they're double chumping. So they dredge. They don't get anything off their dredge. Um, again, this would have gone pretty much exactly the same with green-white, and the blue's really not added anything here. We've drawn one extra card. Um, still doesn't seem that good to me. Um... So they can bring this back out, but it doesn't really do much, and we don't care about taking that damage. 
Sure thing. Ah, uh, that's not bad. Play the ethereal armor. Oh, another ethereal armor? I like that. I like that a lot. And that's gonna be enough to get us the win. Hopefully. They might nature's claim here, but shrug. Uh, we just attack with all our creatures and even if they nature's claim block. Okay, they're nature's claiming. They should have done that. But like, now we know that we need to attack with everything. So that doesn't seem like giving us that information is very smart. Ooh, another core. Awesome. We got a chump blocker. Cool. Uh, I don't see how they win this. Yep. Alright. There's the game. Uh, that was a 3 1. Uh, it definitely could have been better if we played better against Jund and uh, Thing in the Ice. Uh, Blue Moon with Thing in the Ice. Um. Even then, that would have only won us a game, and we would have had to have won game three in both cases, but... Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, that's where it is. There's the deck. Teferi didn't have much to do. We didn't verse Amulet Titan once. Uh, we did verse Jun twice, so that's confirming why I think Leyline's good at the moment in the main. Um, the blue cards, yeah, again, didn't do a lot. Uh, it, it's only, like, a real minor splash here. Maybe if we were versing like a blue-white control, uh, they would have done a little bit more than what they did. But yeah, uh, there's the deck, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike. And subscribe if you want to keep seeing content for both Green-White and Bant. Cheers, guys.